good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining us on After GMS at 745, something we do every Monday through Friday. We get the crew together and we chat with you guys. So thanks so much for starting some conversations with us. Megan Malaris, Stacey Spivey, and Taran Kirksey are all working from home. Ed Matthews has my back like a mile away in the <laughs> weather garden. And I'm here in the studio. So guys, before we get started with our conversations, Let's talk about this forecast, Taran, because I liked it yesterday. Today, not so much. Yeah, <laughs> things just kind of turned around on us pretty quickly there, didn't they? We had lots of sunshine yesterday. Temperatures very warm today, though we do have rain out there. We're going to see several waves of rainfall. We had one move through earlier. Now we're watching another one that will head into the area as we go through the course of the day. You see our future cast model just kind of confirms that we'll just see on again and off again rain from time to time. And then as we go through the afternoon, temperatures will try to warm up into the low 60s. We'll see if that happens. If we do make it into the low to mid 60s, we'll see a better chance of a few thunderstorms developing as we go through the evening before we start to see things taper off overnight tonight. As far as the temperatures are concerned, I think in general, we're going to only make it into the low 60s, but there could be a few exceptions to that rule by tomorrow, maybe a sprinkle, but all in all, tomorrow's looking like a warm or warmer compared to today day with high temperatures in the mid 60s, maybe a spotty shower Thursday. We're completely dry with highs in the mid to upper 60s and then Friday probably starts off dry and then our rain chances go up as we head through the afternoon, especially on into the evening and overnight hours. And it will clear out just in time for the weekend, but it will be a chilly weekend. High temperature Saturday in the low 60s at best. Some of us may not make it out in the 50s. And then by Sunday, looks like we'll have a pretty good chance of some widespread light frost with low temperatures in the mid to upper 30s early Sunday morning before we bounce back into the mid 60s by Sunday afternoon. Let's quick look at your forecast. So we're jumping into our first conversation, well right? Stace? Yeah, sorry to talk over you, Tracy. I uh, wasn't sure who was supposed to talk first, so I was just going to go right at it. Okay, so there's more than just rain that we could spot outdoors in the coming days or possibly in the future. Scientists say that the world's largest hornet has been spotted in the U.S. And if you've been on Facebook, you've probably seen people sharing the story about what they call murder hornets. Entomologists have confirmed insects known as murder hornets have been discovered in Washington state. Asian giant hornets can grow to be over two inches long and are known to prey on honeybees. Several have recently been discovered near the Canadian border and agricultural officials are now working to find and destroy the murder hornets nest before they can spread to other states. Guys, I just want to know what happened to 2020. I mean, <laughs> this was looking to be a good year. Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo lined up on the same day. I mean, and then this, all this stuff was just, it just all happened. And I just am not happy with it. <laughs> your barometer I just for- I just want to and enjoy it. Your barometer for a good year <laughs> was that Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo lined up on the same day. <laughs> Hilarious. I mean, that's a sign of a really good year. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately 2020 has been uh, less than, than the expectations. But, um, you know, you bring up a good point about these I guess these murder, what are they called? Murder hornets? I call them killer hornets. Taran is super excited to get in on this conversation. You've been talking about this all morning. So Taran, what's your fascination with these m murder hornets? I mean, just have you seen the picture like the jaws? They're just very efficient at getting rid of uh, the bees. I know we need the bees, but we still, need the bees. it's just, we do need the bees, but man, that is, Mother Nature is something else. Seeing those things like this big and they're running around just, no. Ooh, man. Wow. Yeah, they're just very interesting. I'll just leave it at that, interesting. Yeah, it, but they can it like, my attention. they can kill people, Taran. Are you, are you missing that point? <laughs> yeah, we'll be all right, it'll just, I think the thing I read said, it feels like hot metal or something going into your skin if they oh bite you. So it would be painful. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna stay away from them, but they're still very interesting creatures, kind of like the other animals that are very scary, but they're still very interesting. I just want to say this, guys, I'm worried about Taran. I think <laughs> the stay at home hoarder has changed him in ways that we may not be able to fix. Um, I finally lost it. 
Uh, these are the things that make him happy, guys. I've never seen him smile so big. It, it was a matter of time before I finally lost. Here we are. All right, so um, let's bring in Megan for some rational com commentary here about these oh. <laughs> killer hornets. Save us, Megan. We're going in, a, in the wrong killer direction. Killer hornets, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised by Turan's reaction on this. He loves all things like science-y, kind of weird stuff anyway. So I think that we should not be super concerned about these murder hornets, at least from a human perspective. Obviously, there's very little evidence that they are overwhelmingly deadly to humans. The main issue here is the honeybee population. Honeybees are the main pollinator of all of our food crops, so you really cannot mess with the bees. <coughs> and if these hornets are going to start attacking populations of honeybees, then we really get into a bad situation and it is very serious. Yeah, mm -hmm. very serious. That means the weather garden that we're, you're standing in, Ed Matthews, mm -hmm. wouldn't be so green. We, I mean, think about all the produce that yeah. we consume every day. I mean, that Megan is right. It could have a devastating effect yeah. on our farming population. Scared to death. They better not come to my weather garden. I'll be ready to torch them for <laughs> oh, sure. Um, <laughs> kind, of, kind of afraid. It's something I'm going to uh, stay on top of you know years ago it was fire ants and now they're here and boy do they hurt when they sting and bite um, hopefully we'll be able to keep that population down but you know if it's not a virus or a pandemic i guess it's going to be a killer hornet mm -hmm. oh well Right. Well, let's hope that neither one of us comes at our doorstep, right? Yes. Um, a few people are commenting on our live stream right now talking about these killer, I call them killer hornets because I can't say the word murder for some reason. It just doesn't work for me. I'm, I just stutter every time. So anyway, the killer hornets, um, Amy says they're not new, right? I thought there was a mention of those bees before. Uh, is this the first time they've been here? So they were initially spotted in Washington state, um, but there's a chance that they could go to, to other states. And they're asking people, if you do see them, you know, to call the agriculture department so that, you know, they can track them and see if they're making their ways to other states. But yes, they started off uh, in some other foreign countries and are now being spotted here in the U.S. Um, and then someone also, Sharon says that, um, they're recommending not killing them, just running away, which she's okay with. And then someone mentioned, and I can't find this comment, that she spotted one and actually said it was like two inches long. It was as long as her pinky finger. I think it was Sharia. I can't find your comment right now, but she said she had one on her back porch and oh, she no. was frightened, obviously. Um, so, I mean, definitely call and report that because we haven't heard of any cases in North Carolina. So if that is in case something they need to look into, uh, definitely make some phone calls because we need to know about that. So uh, from Killer Hornets guys to other news of the day, let's move on here. And I think Megan, you're getting us started with our news headlines. Yeah, talk about a hard turn. I will try to get you caught up with your news headlines today. It is a big deadline for incoming stimulus checks. You need to pay attention to this. It's specifically for people who receive Social Security or VA benefits and don't normally file taxes and have a child 17 or younger. You can claim $500 in stimulus money for each child, but you have to claim the child or children by today. You can visit this story in the Two Wants to Know section of our website if you need help or more information. There you can find a link to put in the information and claim the child credit. Governor Roy Cooper has signed a $1.5 billion relief bill as our state inches closer to reopening. It'll help fund for health, education, small businesses, and other projects. Another portion of this relief bill will provide policy changes to several things like end-of-grade testing, car registration, deadlines, and interest on state taxes. Okay, I'll pick up from here. Uh, Governor Cooper, along with the Coronavirus Task Force, is expected to give an update today at 5 o'clock. We will keep you updated on WFMY News 2 at 5. You can also log in on our website or the app for the latest information.
All right, so let's take a look at the latest number of coronavirus cases in our state. Right now, health officials report nearly 12,000 cases in North Carolina. There are more than 146,000 tests completed. There are 443 cases in Guilford County, and our county is reporting 31 deaths. In Forsyth County, there are 271 cases, and the county health department is reporting five deaths. We'll get another update around 11 this morning, and we'll be sharing those new numbers today on WFMY News 2 at noon. Well, today, Guilford County will begin what it is calling community testing. Healthcare workers will test people at highest risk for the disease so they can have a better understanding of the spread. Tests are by appointment only, and patients must be in an at-risk category. So that could mean that they are showing symptoms, that they have some type of underlying health issue, or that they're 65 years old or older. It will take three days to get the results, and you can find those details on our website. So Lowe's Home Improvement is following Costco's lead here, now requiring workers to wear masks, but not without some pushback. Reopen NC leader Ashley Smith is asking people to boycott the grocery chains. That's both Whole Foods and Costco, but she did note the stores are within their rights to require people wear masks. All right, Stacey, we are jumping into our second conversation this morning. What's next? Well, guys, so it seems like a lot of people are heading to Google to think of ways to stay occupied, occupied during this time. And it sounds like that the phrase how to play instruments was trending for the search engine Google. So we want to hear from you. What are you doing to stay busy as we wait for our state to gradually reopen? A lot of people Googling, how do you play guitar? How do you play piano? So I'm curious to see uh, what are you guys doing to stay occupied? Well, um, my kids have been taking online dance classes. We are members of the little gym and they're closed right now. So uh, they teach um, ballet. They also teach gymnastics so, and sports. So Josiah has been on Zoom learning about different sports and doing gymnastics. And Simone is learning how to point in first and second position. She's taking a ballet class. So that's been really fun. Um, and that's kind of been, Aww. I'm like a dance mom now, you know, <laughs> kind of getting oh, in yeah. on that. <laughs> How about you, Megan? What have uh, you been doing to kind of keep busy during this stay at home? Well, we've been going on a lot of walks, but as far as what I'm Googling, uh, most commonly Googled question for me is, how to get a four month old to sleep. I think I just replaced the month every Mom. month because I'm trying to make some progress. <laughs> so far, he's, he's doing great. I just, yeah, need a little help in that arena. Oh, I feel for you, Meg. I've been there. It will get better, I promise. Is he eating solids yet? Thank Did you. you guys start doing the cereal and mixing that in? Not like Cheerios. Yeah, so we got the go ahead from our doctor Right, right. Not <laughs> not Cheerios, baby uh, yes. cereal, which is usually breast milk mixed in with some powdery substance like oats or rice, although they no longer recommend rice in most cases because of this research study. But anyway, right. yes, we got the go ahead from our doctor yesterday to try it. Okay. And he loved it. Last night, we, we, we tried a little spoonful of oatmeal. Oh my, he smiled after his first bite and then was talking the entire night, his little baby babble. <laughs> He was Aww. so excited and energized, obviously. All right, well, it's supposed to have the opposite effect. He's supposed to like, go to sleep right away. So maybe it, <laughs> maybe he, it's his... Um... Yeah, nope. <laughs> I get it. All right, so I had to explain what baby cereal was because Taran was looking at me like, cereal? You're giving your baby cereal? Yeah, so not the Cheerios, but, you know, the, the creamy kind, which is good for babies. All right, so uh, Ed Matthews, what have you been doing or Googling or trying to learn uh, during the stay at home order. I, well, I, I've been, you know, th things haven't changed a whole lot for me, <clears throat> but I have been Googling how to bake different things. Mm. Uh, let's see, uh, in the past couple of weeks, I've done a peach cobbler, I have done a uh, strawberry cobbler, and I'll have to say that turned out wonderful. Ooh. Not a bad cook here, and you can look at my waistline and tell that, uh, but just kind of doing <laughs> some experimenting in the kitchen. Uh, from time to time, and I, I found out that it's really a lot of fun. Yeah. Men can cook sometime. 
<laughs> yeah, you are probably really great at it. So, you know, as soon as this is all over, invite us over. All right, sounds like a plan. All right, Stacy. so uh, you say that you're not much of a cook, but have you been Googling anything and uh, baking like Ed or doing something different? Well, we just moved into our house recently, so I've been Googling yeah. how to uh, refurnish or uh, refurbish furniture. How do you say that? I'm not sure how to say it. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out how to do like home projects and then also trying to learn how to garden somewhat. So I've been Googling a lot of that. But also I wanted to tell Megan this because, I, and I don't know if it would help or or not, but apparently when I was a baby, my first six months of life, I would not sleep. And the only time I would sleep is in the car. So my mom would literally drive around in the middle of the night with her friends and they would take turns and just drive around so I could like get some sleep. So maybe try that out. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's a good idea. He does like the car, but you know, with this schedule to be up at 2 a.m. for work, it's hard to go on those evening car rides. But yeah, I'll try anything at this point. So <laughs> mm -hmm. we're getting there, baby steps. Oh yeah, I've, mm -hmm. I've tried the car trick too. That's definitely a good one, Stacy. All right, Taran, how about you? Uh, what have you been doing during this stay at home and learning something new? <laughs> well, you know, I've just been uh, trying to expand my uh, barbecue uh, skills and try to cook new things. Other than that, I've been doing a lot of Googling of old sports events, you know, mm -hmm. games that I know that my team's won. Mm -hmm. I can watch those games <laughs> that we lost. I will never watch them again, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. So, so you good. only watch the, the, the games you know your team won. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like my teams to win and I've appreciate it when they win by a lot like i was that guy on madden that would try to win like a hundred and something to zero and if i let the other team score a touchdown i was bothered by it so that's me that's like to win by a lot hilarious <laughs> all right so uh let's get to some of the things that you guys are saying uh leah says perfect time to teach kids how to garden and grow their own food sharia says she's doing some extra cleaning of clutter um, and susan is walking a lot she's sharon is catching up on all the mundane tasks that she's always behind on. 50,000 plus emails dumped. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Mm. And Susan says she is teaching. So happy National Teachers Day. Thank you for being an educator in our uh, area. And um, Carol says she is cleaning and rearranging furniture. So uh, Stacy, you have a partner in furniture rearrangement right now. So, <laughs> so happy that you got your house and that you guys are settled. And this is an exciting time for you guys. Thank you. It is exciting. Uh, a lot of things on my to-do list, mm -hmm. but you know, baby steps is what everyone's saying. Don't worry about getting it all done right now, even though I really want to baby steps. Yeah. Well, you have plenty of time, mm -hmm. uh, nothing like a stay at home order to get those things done. <laughs> all right. We are <laughs> approaching our off time here. So I want to make sure we get one last look at the forecast okay. Ed Matthews. We all need to carry our umbrellas. <clears throat> Uh, yes, indeed, that's a good idea. Certainly a great day to do some rearranging uh, in the house because it's going to be a little wet from time to time, often on showers and upper 50s and lower 60s today. Maybe a rumble of thunder later today. Can't rule that out. Now, the showers will taper off early tomorrow morning. I think Wednesday and Thursday, a couple of dry days, a little breezy on Wednesday. Uh, look at the uh, high temperatures, especially. Uh, right on through the rest of the week and especially Mother's Day weekend. Temperature is well below our normal high of 75. Uh, Saturday 62, uh, Mother's Day morning. Temperatures are going to dip into the upper 30s. We could see some patches of frost across our part of the Piedmont. So get ready for that and get ready for these chilly temperatures that we're going to have for a while. Yeah, Ed, we are excited for a nicer Mother's Day weekend ahead. Tired of all this rain. We mm -hmm. want to say thank you to everybody weighing in on our conversation on our Facebook page. We do this every day at 745 on Facebook Live. It's called After GMS. Right now we have to sign off, but we thank you again. Hope you'll join us tomorrow, and we'll see you back on TV for WFMY News 2 at noon.